Gadgets Field Trip. We're going on a visit. Inspector Gadgets Field Trip. Come on, let's go with hell. Inspector Gadgets Field Trip. What's that you ask? What is it? Inspector Gadgets Field Trip. Well, no one wants to miss it. Inspector Gadget's Field Trip! Inspector Gadget here, down under in beautiful Australia. We are on our way to the biggest city in all of Australia. So let's go, go Gadget Field Trip to Sydney, Australia. in the southern part of what's either the world's largest island or the world's smallest continent. Australia is below the equator in the southern half of the world known as the Southern Hemisphere. Although local tribes called Aborigines have been living here for thousands of years, the first European settlement wasn't until 1770. Many countries had noticed the huge continent, but Captain James Cook was the first to claim Australia. He was sent by England with a huge crew, which luckily for them, also included a boat. One of the crew members was a botanist named Joseph Banks, who recorded the plants that they encountered. A botanist is a person who studies plant life the weird and wonderful new plants that were discovered. He would have sent back photos, but cameras hadn't been invented yet. Captain Cook was so amazed with these plants that he renamed the landing site Botany Bay. And it's still called Botany Bay, some 200 years later. It's the place to visit if you're looking for spectacular views of Sydney Harbour. If you look over there, you can see what England turned its brand new colony into, a prison. These are the Hyde Park Barracks. No, it's not where you hide your park. It's not even where you park your hide. Even today, you can step back in time and pretend to be a prisoner living out a sentence. Convicts were put to work in all sorts of ways. They even built themselves a place to live. There are some prisoners building a new wing. Oh, those aren't prisoners, they're tourists. The convicts slept here, in this dorm. When there weren't enough hammocks, they had to sleep on the floor. Along with the rats, who unfortunately didn't have hammocks. So much for the lighter side of prison life. I'm going over the wall. Go, go, gadget sea lanes. This is the Solway Lance. It was ships like this one that took criminals on the eight-month trip from England to the shores of Australia. This boat recreates a shorter version of one such journey. These make-believe convicts have lots of chores. Swabbing the decks, hoisting the sails, trimming the mast, lifting that barge, toting that bait. 
nail. And loving it. This boat has 10 huge sails to help power it through Sydney Harbor. You know, I think I can see 10 more sails over there. Let's investigate. Those aren't sales. They're part of the very unusual Sydney Opera House. Mr. Eugene Gossens, who was the conductor of the Sydney Symphony Orchestra, thought that Sydney needed an opera house. So in 1957, a contest was held to design one. A young architect in Denmark named Jorn Utsen heard about the contest and wanted to enter, but he had never been to Sydney. For some photographs of Sydney Harbor. There were lots of sailboats in the pictures. Some say that was the inspiration for his unique design. If I designed it, I would have added a rubber duck. There are over one million special tiles that make up the outside of the Sydney Opera House. They are Swedish tiles that actually clean themselves with rainwater. That's why they're so bright. Let's hop on to more adventures. Go, go, Gadget Coat! We are standing in the rocks. I must be in the wrong place. I don't see any rocks. But my guidebook insists prominent sandstone rocks used to be here. So I guess we're off to a rocky start. Let's investigate. The Aborigines had been living in Australia for thousands of years. To test your alertness, Aborigines are people native to Australia. Iraq was the first European colony. The colony was established in 1788. Maybe back then the place really rocked. The rocks is home to quite a few of Australia's first. Australia's first bank, Westpac Banking Corporation, was founded here in 1870. This museum houses memorabilia and tells the story of the bank's early troubles with the gold rush of the mid-1800s and the story of one of its founders, Mary Riven. Quite a celebrity in the rocks, Miss Riby was herself a reformed convict who became one of Australia's first successful businesswomen. There are many other fascinating places left for us to explore here in Sydney. Let's go, go, Gadget Copter! This is old Sydney town. Like the sign says, step through the gate and you step back in time to the 1800s. I stepped in the 1800s once and I just couldn't Get it off my shoe. This is the State Library of New South Wales. I guess all those convicts had time in their hands, so books were a must. The old section of the library was designed by another of Australia's success stories. Francis Greenway, a convict who actually became a well-known architect throughout Sydney. This little island was a scary place in the old colonial days of Australia. Although a large portion of the convicts brought to Australia had been convicted of petty crimes, there were some vicious criminals sent here too. They got to stay here at Fort Denison. Home to the cruelest of the cruel, meanest of the mean, and toughest of the tough. No, this isn't the electric chair. It's the governor's wife's chair, also known as Mrs. Macquarie's chair. It is carved out of stone and was built at the request of the second governor of the colony, Lachlan Macquarie. The chair was built as a prime spot for his wife to look out over Sydney Harbor. And 
What leads down to the street from the stone chair? Stone steps. They're called the Charpeian steps. This was the path prisoners took from the docking ships to their new homes at the barracks. Mrs. Macquarie got to watch all the fun. Well, we've been all over Down Under, and we haven't even scratched the surface. We've seen an opera house with ten sails, a place where time stands still, and the very spot where it all began. Go, go, gadget, field trip. <laughs> <laughs>